Florence Nightingale was a young woman of very good family in London, and uh, the Nightingale was very prominent, very well-to-do. But Florence had a, a, some sort of an epiphany in her teens that she wanted to help mankind. That's always dangerous. She was determined, very strong-willed young woman. And despite her parents' uh, desires that she marry and do the usual things, she went off to Germany. She found a, a, a nursing uh, school, very unusual, uh, for teaching females to nurse. Nursing wasn't for women. And then she came back to London and finally got herself hired, or maybe volunteered, in a London hospital. When her family heard about it, they thought, oh my God, what's she thinking of? The, the public hospitals were where the, the poorest, most miserable, awful, lowest class, dirty, filthy, drunk people, awful, 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 went to die. And here was their delicate daughter attending these people. Well, of course she was. And she was determined to do it. She said, this is what needs to be done. And then the, the Crimean War broke out. She said, well, this is what I'm, I'm here for, to take nursing to the front lines. Well, of course, the military had never heard of such a thing. What nonsense is this? Molly Codlin. When, when, in the war, if your fellow falls down shot, you carry him off the field or cover his face. And if he's got a broken leg, you sort of jerk it around until he gets set. I mean, you do it yourself, for God's sake. Pluck it up. <laughs> but she said, no, 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 they need to be nursed. Well, she had an awful time. She had connections. Her family was well connected. She had connections to the government and the War Department. She knew somebody there. Somebody knew somebody. And she bashed them until they finally let her go to the war front. Now, she'd been training nurses. I think there were about 20 women she'd been training as nurses. And they all shipped off to the Bosphorus. The base the British French were using was Scutari, which was right across the Bosphorus from Constantinople. And that was the base that they transshipped across to the Crimea and the uh, big fortress of Sevastopol and where the action was in the Crimea, across the Black Sea. Well, she landed there, and of course Lord Raglan, who was in command of British forces, said, Madam, you are to take your hoors and return to England forthwith. She had to explain to them that they were nurses and they were there for a purpose. Well, he didn't want any part of that. He wanted them out of there. But they had about four weeks before the next ship came. So he let them occupy a Turkish barracks. If you can imagine what that might have been like. Well, she and her nurses and the walking wounded, there were plenty of them around, cleaned the thing out and began to put up beds and, and nurse the soldiers. And of course, then they began to pour in from the front. The battle at Inkerman. The battle at Balaclava, the charge of the library, these slaughters, the, the most awful leadership the British and French had, led their troops into mass slaughter. It was just awful. And then, of course, cholera broke out, and all of this was dumping back on this Kutari base, and she and her women, and it, it expanded. And, of course, Raglan finally said, all right, you can do your nursing thing if you don't get underfoot. You know, gracious to the end.